Lisa Sue, you gave a really strong set of predictions and, and kind of growth outlook for this market in AI accelerators. In real terms, right now in this quarter and the quarter gone, where does that confidence come from? What, what data points are you relying on? Yeah, Ed, you know, we look at AI, you know, when I look at the potential of AI, it is really the, you know, single most important, um, you know, sort of, you know, technology innovation over the last 50 years. So AI has so much potential to, you know, change the way um, our businesses work, to change our personal productivity, uh, to really change the way we do research and a whole bunch of things. Um, you know, from our standpoint, we see the um, AI TAM growing to upwards of, you know, 400 billion by 2027. Um, I think from an AMD standpoint, uh, you know, you, you were at our launch, Ed, in December. Um, it was a great coming out party for the uh, AMD, you know, AI capabilities, and um, it's gone really well. I think our customer interactions, um, our uh, product uh, qualifications, our ramp have gone really well. Uh, so yes. we were able to update, um, you know, some of our numbers um, uh, this, uh, this, this past week. I think a lot of folks focused on that ramp and how it went in the quarter. You know, you exceeded the 400 million that you told me about at that event. So it's $3.5 billion of sales this year for MI300. What's interesting here is kind of your ramp relative to what's happening on the supply side. And I wondered how big a factor supply will be in matching or beating that number in 24. Yeah, absolutely. Ed. This is the fastest product um, ramp, um, you know, in our history. So, you know, we exceeded our numbers in Q4 over 400 um, uh, million. Uh, we're going to grow into Q1, and we update our full year forecast from two billion to three and a half billion. Um, the way we think about that is that's a customer demand statement. So that is customers that we've engaged in uh, who have made commitments to us, who have uh, placed orders with us. Um, we're planning for a much larger um, number as it relates to the supply chain. This is what we should do. We always plan for success. Um, so, you know, my view is um, it's still very, very early in the in the innings for um, AI accelerators and particularly for MI300. Uh, but uh, this is an opportunity for us to, you know, continue to build a major growth driver um, as we uh, work with our top customers on their AI plans. And Lisa, just to clarify in layman's terms, so your expectation is the supply available to you from a volume perspective in 24 will be greater than the $3.5 billion in demand that you, you feel confident in right now? That's absolutely right, Ed. So you and I talked about this kind of change in what's happening uh, in the use case of AI accelerators, moving from a predominantly training focused environment to inference. And I think I'm right in saying you're confident that, that AMD is going to play a key role in that inference part. But there's also the question of when the psychology of the customer changes. And I think one question that one of the analysts covering the stock had, Pierre Ferragu, was on the show with me earlier, is when do the customers commit? When do they basically say, we've got good visibility on our, on our training and now inference demands over a multi-year horizon? Yeah, I think, Ed, um, you know, as always, uh, when we're dealing with, you know, sort of um, deep partnerships like we have, you know, across, um, you know, sort of the hyperscalers, you know, at our event, uh, we mentioned, you know, Microsoft, Oracle, Meta, uh, all committing to adopt MI300. You know, we really plan multi-year uh, roadmaps as well as, you know, sort of capabilities. So I'm super happy with how things have gone. Um, I think key in all this is the devil is in the details. The engineering is really important. Uh, we've made tremendous amount of progress um, over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, you've heard directly from, you know, one of our customers, you know, Microsoft, Kevin Scott, talked about the work that they've been doing um, with their, um, you know, most important workloads around, um, you know, ChatGPT and its capabilities. Um, we know, we have confidence that uh, from a performance standpoint, we can be very competitive. And um, from that standpoint, the, uh, you know, the, the customer conversations are multi-year, multi-generational conversations. Uh, we certainly have good visibility in terms of exact orders for the next um, couple of quarters. Uh, but more importantly, we're planning, you know, sort of how is this market going to grow and how do we grow together, uh, you know, going forward? Lisa, where are we at with PC? and everyday server demand? 
Well, it's a it's a good question. I think we've gone through some ups and downs um, in um, you know the PC market and the traditional server market. Um, I think what we saw is a nice recovery into the second half of the year. So we were um, very pleased with our performance, frankly, in traditional server um, in the second half of the year. We grew um, you know strong uh, double digits, and more importantly, um, what we see is you know our products are getting a lot of traction. So. Our Genoa or our Zen 4 product line has ramped really nicely. Um, as we go into 2024, you know, my expectation is that the server market will grow um, and that we will grow uh, significantly faster than the market, just given the strength of our product portfolio. Um, and there are a lot of data center refreshes, you know, going on. Uh, so that's the server market. Um, and you also asked about the PC market. I think the PC market also recovered nicely in the second half of the year. Um, you know, in general, the PC market tends to be a little bit seasonal. So the second half is stronger than the first half. Um, and then we see that also in 2024. But we also see the PC market growing, let's call it low single digits, um, you know, here in, uh, in 2024. And within that, um, the very exciting part about the PC market is AI PCs, uh, which we think can grow uh, substantially faster. Lisa, the tension in the share reaction is exactly that. Enthusiasm for MI300 and concern about a recovery in end markets elsewhere. Um, how do you see the tension between those two uh, product lines, essentially, for you evolving in this current period and throughout 24? You know, I'm actually really excited about 24. Uh, you know, I start every year always quite optimistic, but I look at 24 as, um, you know, such an important year for us. I think, you know, 23 was when we um, established ourselves as, you know, a key AI contender. Um, I think 24, um, you know, we're going to show just how, um, how capable and uh, how much, uh, you know, AI is now a part of, you know, really the entire AMD story. And in terms of the other markets, look, I like PCs. Um, I think traditional server is going to recover nicely um, as well. And, uh, you know, put aside some of the temporal things, um, you know, we've said that, uh, you know, revenue will be more second half weighted. Um, in 24, I think we feel really good about the setup um, going into the next few quarters, given the strength of our product portfolio and also, you know, the great, um, you know, customer partnerships that we have. AMD CEO Lisa Su, it's great to catch up. Great to have you on Bloomberg Television. And as always, I love talking chips. So thank you for your time.